Welcome back to another session of the African Allure Outdoors. Thank you for joining us today. This will be the second program in the series on baiting wild bush pigs. So join us today as I discuss food. Now, bush pigs are very typical of any other pigs anywhere else in the world. Um, in the USA, they talk about the feral hogs. Ours are very similar. In Africa, we have two types of pigs. We have the day walkers, which are your warthogs. Then we have the night walkers, which are your bush pigs. And it's the bush pigs that we want to target. This is a seldom seen animal. Um, they're very shy. They're very active at night and they're very, very widespread. We get them right down from the coastal uh, forests right the way up into the semi-desert areas of, of South Africa. They're very adaptable. Um, they're excellent, excellent eating. They are probably one of the best eating meats in the African bush and uh, highly, highly sought off. There are a few ways of hunting them. The one way is to hunt them with dogs. Um, the other way is to um, bait them and the other way is just to ambush them. So the method that we're using now here is we are actually going to be baiting them. I start a program here every May month and I normally harvest two pigs during the year. Um, it's not a lot but what I try and do is I try and harvest the dominant sow. Uh, what I found in my particular area is the groups are sow dominated. Um, even the big male will give away to that sow when she comes in and uh, we've seen it before that you'll have a male feeding at the feeder and then you'll hear the sow coming in from quite a long ways away and as soon as she starts getting close then you see he starts getting jumpy and then he makes a duck for it. So they, they have an interesting dynamic and we found that if you harvest the sow then you tend to find the other sort of sub females in the group become um, sort of sexually active and you get a nice big explosion of your of your your bush pig populations so it's it, it's good for the population uh, what we do is we, we harvest a boar every year and basically we like to think of it as just taking or changing the blood around in the groups here because the males are transient they come in for a little while and then they move out or we take them out start baiting with a rotten carcass and uh, with the rotten car carcass then what I have is I have a wet mix which I'll link into the video shortly here that you can see I'll try and show you what's inside here at the moment um, it's got quite a pungent smell but you can see you can pretty much see my mix in here this is what this looks like for now um, I also have this thing strategically placed under a edge of a roof and the reason for that is we, at this time of year we get dew at night and the dew runs off the roof and it runs into this. It saves me having to water it. Don't put these things in the full sun. They can have a little bit of sun in early morning but they don't want to be in the strong midday sun. You're going to be topping up water here the whole time. So that's this. And uh, I'm just going to be topping this off with top now to get it really going. So now we've put the chop, the chop in, we've mixed it up all in that sauce there. And you can see there's actually already a bit of fizzing going on there. Now my wet mix I keep going throughout the year. Uh, to start the wet mix, basically what you need is whole maize or whole corn. And uh, you put that into a bucket, cover it with water and let it soak for a few days. Then to that what you want to add is you want to add a little bit of yeast. Uh, instant yeast is fine um, and then we normally add like a cultured yogurt or buttermilk or something like that that's gone sour and we add that to the mix and it sort of really starts producing alcohol and all those real funky things <laughs> with the current lockdown in South Africa uh, it is a little bit tempting I must say the the smell that comes out of this thing is pretty intense but uh, I'm not sure I'm, I'm that brave then another thing that I like to add to the mix is a, a, a product that we that we get out here and uh, that is called chop now chop is used in animal feed production and what it consists of basically is just the um, the cobs or the husks of the of the maize that has just basically been beaten up it's sort of a, a bit of roughage if I can put it to you that way um, it has a little bit of nutritional value, but it's obviously not like the corn. 
but when you add that to the mix uh, it really gets going and it really starts fermenting and uh, that's basically how I start my mix is I just start from the scratch so it's corn let it soak for a few days then into that I bomb some yeast and I bomb uh, a bottle of mahiu or, a, or any sort of sour culture milk um, if alcohol sales are open then one can use the local shake shake beer here in South Africa that they make from sorghum but there's nothing to stop you using whatever you like for me I use maize and the reason that I use maize is that my feeders I, I build feeders which I'm going to go through with you in another video of a, of a feeder build but what I like to do in my, my um, feeders is I like to feed dry maize I just find that it spins easily and it doesn't get clogged and, and it works for me the other thing is as well is that with bush pigs I tend to start with meat first they're rotten meat um, and you'll watch many hunting videos in South Africa where bush pigs are shot over meat or guts or bone piles or something like that and there's nothing wrong with that it's 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 a great method and it really works but for me personally I want to eat something that I think has been eating a little bit healthier so what I tend to do is with the um, wet mix is I, I would go three days a week and I would go and put this wet mix out just to top it up keep them interested and then what I do is I have the feeder that goes off twice in an evening normally um, just after dark let's say uh, in the winter months it'll be about 6 30 and then I'll have it go off again at 8 o'clock it's amazing the effect that that sound has on pigs in the surrounding area when that thing goes off and it it, it rattles like that it's like a big dinner bell and you get these pigs coming in um, I'm not a very keen candidate for sitting out the whole night waiting for pigs to come in especially with a bow um, most of the pigs that we shoot here in the year I tend to shoot within the first hour and a half of actually sitting in the blind so I try and make it easy for myself however it does cost a fair amount of money to keep these feeders going um, you're looking at probably one uh, 50 kilograms bag of um, maize every two weeks so it, it costs 500 rand a month you know um, so anyway let's dive into the mix that I've got here like I say this one's been going for a little while uh, what I'm going to be adding today is I'm going to be adding the chop to it and uh, you can follow me with that um, so as I was saying to you To come back to the meat story, I'm going to start with meat because it smells and it works very well to get the, the animals onto, onto, onto bait. Um, but when I've got them onto maize, then what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to feed them up that they don't want to go and eat anywhere else. So I'm going to be letting my feeders generate a lot of food for these animals. I tend to find that their body fat picks up at this time which is not only good for breeding purposes for the animals that you're not going to harvest but also when you harvest an animal it's got a nice layer of body fat on it and of course it tastes better as I say I'm not totally against the feeding of meat but I kind of want to eat an animal that is sort of a little bit cleaner than eating rotten meat and haha stuff you know but again it's personal choices I know there are people in Natal that feed their their bush pig baiting sites with pineapples and it's incredible to taste that bush pig because that bush pig actually has a pineapple-y smell but it's up to you um, some of the guys use citrus as well citrus works wonderful and it, it can also give a citrus a citrus taste to it um, I don't know if you can see I'll try and swing the camera a little bit but um, even my nyalas think that uh, the smell is is pretty pretty fantastic. Let's see if we can get them to. So uh, even she thinks the the that the chop is is pretty great, and there's quite a nice aroma here. Um, so that's pretty cool. Thanks for joining us here today with this episode. I hope you've learned a couple of tricks. 
there's going to be a lot more to come in this series. So keep watching us. Remember to hit the like and subscribe down the bottom there. We've got the bait cooking or on the go here and it's fermenting. We've got a couple of days to play with. It's the start of our winter here now so the fermentation process is a little bit longer. But we're going to go and do a site selection. And I'm going to run through with you the ins and outs of the site selection. Um, I'm not sure if you can see but the ground around us here is pretty flat. But we're going to be baiting up in these mountains that are up behind us here. And uh, that's going to be exciting. Uh, another concern of mine for using meat or meat related products up there is one, there's a lot of brown hyenas. Okay, I'm not too concerned about them. But the other problem is, is there is a lot of leopard. And I'm expecting that when we start putting meat out, we're going to get visitors from both leopard and from brown hyena. And then I'm also expecting to get a whole lot of other sort of nocturnal predators, the small predators, genets, civets, that kind of thing also coming in after that. And then once we switch over to the maze, then our problems start with the day, the day walkers. Uh, we might possibly have warthogs. And I think that there is also the possibility, the very strong possibility that we're going to have big problems with baboons and with monkeys and that sort of thing up there. So folks, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope uh, you guys are learning something out of that. Okay, just another quick pro tip that I want to give you. Old oil drum about that size, very handy thing to keep um, close to your feeder. You can always, when you want to go out and feed, you can take that with, just load it up with a bit of stuff, go to your baiting site and uh, then work from there. The other, the other thing that I wanted to say to you is always keep a little bit of chop left over. I always keep a little bit like a quarter bag. And let's just see if we can get the light right. One of the reasons that I keep a quarter bag of the chop is that when it comes to baiting, the night that we actually want to shoot, what I will do is I'll go and put that chop out all over the ground around the feeding site and what it does is it just helps with the illumination especially under the lights or under low light conditions that you've got a, a better silhouette of the pig when you want to shoot it. You'll see in one of my videos, I'll link it up here, um, of us shooting this big bush pig on this white background. It works wonderfully. Thanks folks, stick with us, goodbye.